Good afternoon, everyone, or maybe good evening. Uh, this is Pavel Topolo from the SRT team, and I'm very happy to welcome you all at today's session, Study in France, where we'll have the chance to, uh, to hear from representative of ESSEC Business School, Ms. Magdalena Dorman, and also uh, from um, the representative of Campus France in the Mexico office, Mr. Leon Enriquez, uh, about what it is to study in France, uh, how to, to apply to a French university, and nevertheless, what are the benefits of studying at one of the most prestigious business schools of uh, France, ESSEC Business School. I would like to welcome uh, my, my colleagues uh, to, to put on their cameras and uh, say hi to you. And afterwards, we will continue with a short introduction, how will all of you today. So, Hello, everybody. This is Magdalena from ESSEC Business School. Thank you, Magdalena. Yo soy Leon Enrique de Campus France en la Ciudad de México. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leon, and uh, welcome to, to you as well. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, just to, to quickly tell you, uh, on the right-hand side of your screens, you can see the, the chat panel where we can communicate with you. Feel free to share all of your questions during the presentations of our speakers today, and we'll be answering them uh, towards the, the after the, the session is uh, covered with the presentation that we have prepared for you. So you can answer your, you can uh, ask your questions in the right hand side of your screen in the chat panel. Me and my colleague Michelle will be collecting your questions and we'll be uh, sharing them with the presenters. Now with no further ado, I would like to introduce you uh, again, our speaker, uh, Leon Enriquez from Campus France, Mexico. Also his colleague, Idalia Martinez, who is going to tell us a little bit more about education in France. And afterwards, we'll continue with the presentation of Ms. Magdalena Dormal. So Enrique and uh, Idalia, the floor is yours. Campus France in Puebla, Mexico. So I don't know if all of you uh, know uh, know us. <laughs> Campus France is a French agency for the promotion of higher education, international student services, and education abroad. I know uh, you are watching us from uh, different countries of America. So I just want you to know that uh, we have a representatives all over the world. So if you are watching us from uh, Brazil or Colombia or United States, uh, we have offices in your country so you can uh, get in touch with the people of uh, your, your country. So uh, my colleague uh, Leon Enriquez is going to make a presentation uh, in Spanish of uh, all the uh, education opportunities that you have in, in France. Also, uh, we will talk about uh, some uh, uh, scholarships and grants. Uh, it's important uh, that you know that uh, every country has uh, their uh, programs and their offers, so uh, you need to, to see the website of every uh, Campus France, uh, every country of Campus France in, in your in the in the Americas, and uh, I I will also uh, be answering your questions in the chat, and uh, I'm I'm here. You can write me uh, in English and in Spanish or in French. Okay, so uh, Leon, it's it's your turn. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Idalia. Y bueno, gracias a todos y todas por acompañarnos a esta presentación y en particular a SRT por brindarnos esta oportunidad y a nuestros colegas de ESSEC. Entonces, yo les voy a hacer una breve presentación sobre estudiar en Francia después del bachillerato o de la preparatoria. Eh, la titulamos eh, de la prepa a Francia. Y bueno, vamos a hablar algunas generalidades para que después de la prepa tengan una oportunidad de estudios en Francia. Entonces, muy rápidamente, ¿por qué elegir Francia? En el video vimos algunos aspectos muy representativos de este país. Es el 
destino turístico más visitado en el mundo, es una potencia económica, es el país más grande de la Unión Europea que además les da un acceso privilegiado al resto de los países de Europa. Es un país con una gran calidad de vida en términos de salud, pero también de esparcimiento y bueno, es un país donde se habla francés, es un, el, el, el país donde nació la francofonía, esta red de países que comparten esta lengua y esta cultura y a la cual tienen un acceso privilegiado al estudiar en Francia porque a lo largo de la presentación veremos que también es posible realizar estudios superiores en inglés en este país totalmente. Sin embargo, cuando estén en Francia se van a dar cuenta que eh, aprender el francés va a ser indispensable, entonces pueden estudiar en inglés y a la par estarán aprendiendo francés, un idioma que junto con el inglés les abrirá muchas puertas en muchos países del mundo. Ahora, ¿cuál es el sistema eh, educativo francés y cómo lo podemos comparar? Ustedes provienen de diferentes países, pero aquí les pongo el ejemplo mexicano, donde el primer nivel de estudios superiores se llama la licenciatura, que como sabrán dura entre cuatro y cinco años de estudios superiores. En Francia, el nivel después del bachillerato o del baccalaureat se llama licence y solamente dura tres años de estudios superiores. Estos tres años están homologados con el resto de los países de la Unión Europea. Después de la licence se, se accede al máster 1 o primer año de maestría y después al máster 2 o segundo año de maestría. ¿Esto qué quiere decir? En muchos sistemas, particularmente en Latinoamérica o el bachelor en Estados Unidos, son muy similares. Quiere decir que con un diploma de bachillerato o equivalente, ustedes pueden acceder sin necesidad de presentar un examen a las universidades francesas. Y esto también quiere decir que mientras en México, por ejemplo, realizan entre cuatro y cinco años de estudios para obtener una licenciatura, en Francia, en cinco años pueden obtener un diploma de máster, un diploma de maestría. Entonces, en términos de tiempo y también de dinero, pues es una gran ventaja porque a los 22, 23 años ya obtienen un diploma de maestría. Y también es importante que sepan que hay convenios de reconocimiento mutuo entre varios países y Francia. ¿Qué pueden estudiar? Conocerán que en Francia existen todas las áreas de estudio, desde las artes, la moda, la ciencia, la historia, las ciencias sociales, hasta arquitectura, aeronáutica, gastronomía o ingeniería. Son algunas de las áreas más interesantes en Francia, pero pueden estudiar cualquier tipo de estudios superiores. La medicina, la veterinaria pueden ser una excepción, pero fuera de esto, todas las áreas están disponibles. Ahora, ¿dónde pueden estudiar en Francia? Básicamente hay tres tipos de instituciones, las universidades, las grandes écoles y los institutos especializados. Depende de la carrera que estudien, el tipo de institución donde van a realizar esta formación. Por ejemplo, las universidades son todas públicas, tienen un costo de inscripción para los estudiantes eh, fijado por el Estado. También son pluridisciplinarias, es decir, tienen casi todo tipo de carreras y, bueno, eh, son para formaciones largas, digamos, alguien que quiera hacer licenciatura y maestría o llegar hasta el doctorado. Después tenemos las Grandes Écoles, eh, mi colega Magdalena, que les hablará de ESEC, una de las escuelas más prestigiosas de negocios en Francia, pertenece a este gran grupo selecto de las grandes escuelas, que son más selectivas que las universidades, en el sentido de que hay que presentar un examen o proceso especial para ser admitido, pero también muy prestigiosas en sus áreas de conocimiento. De hecho, solo hay grandes escuelas de negocios, de ciencia política, de, de relaciones internacionales y de ingenieros. Y también existen institutos especializados que ya ofrecen programas en áreas muy específicas, como las escuelas de arte, los conservatorios de música o eh, las, eh, las escuelas de gastronomía. ¿Cuánto cuesta estudiar en Francia? Les decía que las universidades públicas tienen todas un costo de inscripción anual fijado por el Estado. A nivel licenciatura son solo 2.770 euros por año en todas las universidades, es decir, las que se llaman université. 
Eh, también tenemos becas de colegiatura para que ustedes paguen solamente un porcentaje mínimo de este costo anual por la licenciatura. Además de las universidades, es, es, existen escuelas privadas y por lo general sus costos de inscripción anuales varían entre los 3.000 hasta los 10.000 euros por año, en algunos casos un poco más. Eh, ¿qué, ¿Qué oportunidades tienen después del bachillerato? Pues hacer toda la carrera, es decir, la licenciatura y seguir con una maestría. También pueden irse a aprender el francés únicamente, por ejemplo, tomar un año sabático para aprender solo el francés. O también pueden hacer un intercambio académico si ustedes entran a una universidad en México, por ejemplo, o en otro país, en la cual hay un convenio para realizar ya sea un semestre o un año de intercambio. Estas son las oportunidades que tienen después del bachillerato. El francés, por ejemplo, si ustedes quieren irse un año completo de inmersión para aprender el francés, pueden escoger cualquier curso, eh, inscribirse, desde luego más de tres meses, eh, nos contactan para realizar su trámite y para solicitar su visa. Entonces, cualquier, cualquier curso que les permita obtener un diploma eh, de francés, les permite realizar esta experiencia de inmersión en el idioma. Aquí hay algunos catálogos generales para cualquier país en los cuales pueden buscar cursos de francés eh, desde un verano hasta un semestre o un año lingüístico en universidades públicas o en escuelas privadas también. El intercambio, les decía, es posible, es decir, que se vayan un semestre y que se les revaliden las materias para no perder el semestre o el año, únicamente cuando hay un convenio entre la universidad de su país y la universidad en Francia. Entonces, si ustedes no están listos para irse a hacer una carrera completa a Francia, pueden vivir esta experiencia del intercambio, pero asegúrense que la universidad de su país tenga un convenio eh, para que puedan realizar esta movilidad. Y la licenciatura, que es algo muy interesante, poder realizar en tres años la licenciatura completa en Francia y obtener un diploma francés. Bueno, aquí pueden escoger una carrera en tres universidades distintas cuando se trata de universidades públicas. Realizan todo el trámite a través de Campus France que les corresponde. Nosotros los acompañamos durante todo el proceso. Esto quiere decir que no tienen que contactar a las universidades en Francia ni enviar papeles a Francia. Nos contactan a nosotros, nosotros eh, les pedimos un expediente y lo enviamos a las universidades que en un periodo de dos a tres meses les darán respuesta positiva o negativa. Pueden ser aceptados en las tres universidades y al final escoger eh, pues la, el programa que más les interesa. Este es un calendario, tienen que estar listos siempre entre noviembre y enero de cada año y contar con los requisitos básicos, que son el nivel de idioma francés o inglés, y el certificado de bachillerato o prueba de que van en el último año de la carrera. Después tienen que pasar por una entrevista con nosotros, no hay una, un examen de admisión, solo una entrevista sobre sus motivos para estudiar en Francia, entre febrero, en el mes de febrero y entre marzo y abril obtienen respuesta de las universidades para que soliciten su visa en junio y agosto, porque en Francia siempre inician las clases en septiembre. ¿Cuáles son los requisitos para estudiar la licenciatura en una universidad pública francesa? Como les decía, su bachillerato culminado o sus calificaciones hasta el último año de preparatoria, es decir, el quinto semestre de prepa, y el nivel del B2 de francés certificado con este examen que seguramente conocen, que es el DELF. Entonces, si aprenden el idioma, certifíquenlo con estos exámenes que hacen, se hacen en los institutos franceses o en las alianzas francesas y que les permiten eh, presentar una candidatura a cualquier universidad pública en Francia. El B2 es el mínimo requerido. Eh, en nuestra página, mexico.campusfrance.org, pero como les decía Idalia, también pueden buscar la página de Campus France correspondiente de, a su país. Encontrarán más información sobre todas las carreras, sobre las becas y ahí podrán crear su expediente en línea para presentar su candidatura a una universidad o bien para solicitar la visa de estudiante. Eh, también pueden solicitar una postulación directa, es decir, contactar directamente a la, un, a la institución francesa para presentar su candidatura. Este es el caso de los programas impartidos en inglés. Como saben, en Francia existen muchos programas impartidos en el inglés. La ESEC 
que veremos a continuación ofrece programas totalmente en inglés y aquí tienen que ponerse en contacto con la institución para que les explique cuál es el proceso de admisión y cuál es el nivel de inglés requerido, que por lo general pues también será un B2 o equivalente. Eh, bueno, quienes no tengan nacionalidad europea tendrán que pedir una visa de estudiante, es muy sencillo, eh, para cualquier periodo mayor a tres meses hay que pedir la visa ante el Consulado General de Francia en México. Eh, solo se les pide la carta de aceptación, eh, una beca o bien comprobar recursos de sus padres para que puedan estudiar en Francia y que nosotros en Campus France aprobemos el trámite. Eh, como sabrán y por la preocupación que tengan algunos, el consulado en muchos países, incluyendo México, está cerrado temporalmente por la pandemia, pero estamos haciendo todo lo posible para que eh, los estudiantes puedan irse en, antes de septiembre e iniciar su, sus cursos normalmente este año. El ministerio ya dio un anuncio en el cual se dará prioridad a las visas de estudiante para que puedan iniciar sus, sus estudios a tiempo. Bueno, también sepan que Francia no es nada más París, es muchas ciudades eh, en el norte, en el sur, pegados a Alemania, España, Italia, eh, encontrarán una gran variedad de ciudades universitarias y es importante que se den la oportunidad de conocerlas porque no nada más es mejor la calidad de vida fuera de París, sino que también es mucho más accesible, ¿no? Entonces, en París se recomienda un presupuesto de 1.000 euros al mes, mientras que en otras ciudades entre 600 y 850 euros al mes. Entonces, es una, una gran ventaja darse la oportunidad de conocer otras ciudades. Y por último, decirles que la gran diferencia que hace Francia con respecto al resto de países que les ofrecen programas de educación superior son las ventajas que tienen los estudiantes. Y aquí eh, solo les enumero algunas, tienen descuentos estudiantiles en transportes, en alimentación, en vida cultural, cines, museos, teatro, etc. Tienen derecho también a trabajar legalmente los estudiantes eh, hasta un 60% del tiempo completo y a ser remunerados de acuerdo a la cantidad de horas de trabajo. Es una gran ventaja. También cuando obtienen un diploma francés eh, pueden eh, quedarse a buscar trabajo eh, durante un año suplementario a su visa de licencia profesional o bien de maestría. Eh, tienen también una beca de alojamiento todos los estudiantes APL et personalisé por le logement ou CAF, eh, que les da un apoyo económico mensual para pagar parte de su renta mensualmente. Es una gran ayuda que otros países no ofrecen. Les decía eh, alimentación con restaurantes universitarios con tarifas de bajo costo, 3 o 4 euros por el menú completo. La seguridad social es gratis para todos los estudiantes, es gratuita. Y también, bueno, pueden obtener descuentos en vuelos para, eh, para, para viajar a Francia o bien para sus familiares. Um, entonces, bueno, eh, pues eso sería todo. Eh, estos son nuestros contactos en México. De acuerdo a su ciudad, pueden contactarnos en la Ciudad de México, en Puebla, en Guadalajara, Mérida o Monterrey. Estamos a su disposición. Y si están en otro país, acérquense a Campus France eh, de, su, de su país, eh, donde seguramente los apoyarán con el desarrollo de su proyecto de estudios en Francia. También nos pueden escribir desde luego para canalizarlos con eh, el país que, que les interesa. Bueno, pues muchas gracias. Por mi parte, eh, esto sería todo. Si, si tienen preguntas, las estaremos con respondiendo en el chat y bueno, dejo a mi colega Magdalena para que continúe con, con su plática. Thank you very much for your great presentation, Leon. I, I wish I would have been able to say it all in Spanish. Just, just to tell you all that we will continue with the rest of the webinar in English. And before giving the floor to uh, our speaker, Ms. Magdalena Dormal, we will First, to check a very, very nice video of one of the students of the SEC Business School. Hola, mi nombre es María Bomer. 
Tengo 19 años y vengo de Cali, Colombia y soy estudiante del primer año del Club of BBA International Track. Escogí el ESEC por la reputación que tiene la escuela porque es muy conocida mundialmente y me va a, a brindar oportunidades que nunca pensé tener. Eh, la verdad escogí Francia porque me encanta la manera en que los franceses tienen un enfoque en la educación y la oportunidad que tengo al poder estudiar en inglés mientras aprendo francés y otros idiomas. Lo que más me gusta del programa es la internacionalidad que tengo, la gente que he logrado conocer de diferentes culturas y la oportunidad que el colegio nos brinda de hacer los International Exchanges, donde voy a tener la posibilidad de ir a lugares donde nunca pensé que podía ir mientras estudiaba en Francia. Además, también tenemos la oportunidad de las, de las prácticas, donde este semestre pienso hacer una práctica de tres meses en Godiva y poder empezar mi carrera en, en compañías que nunca pensé que podía llegar a trabajar. Bueno, y para terminar, para mí ese en tres palabras es simplemente internacionalidad, comunidad y solidaridad. Good afternoon, everybody. So, as Pavel kindly introduced me, uh, my name is Magdalena Dormand and I work at ESEC Business School. Um, thank you for being here with us today. Um, I'm going to start with the presentation, but maybe just before doing that, um, I'm uh, in charge of recruitment at uh, ESEC Business School uh, and I'm based in Latin America and um, I'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, so after this this presentation, but also uh, after that, to prepare your application for a SEC Business School if you happen to be interested, which I hope. So now let's start with the presentation. Um, so before talking about the Bachelor in Business Administration, which I'll be focusing in today, uh, I'll be happy to tell you a little bit about a SEC. Um, so we are a business school, we are focused in business. Um, we are a small to medium university um, and we have around 6,000 students from undergraduate and graduate level. Um, ESSEC is a French university which has um, been uh, founded in 1907 in the suburbs of Paris. Um, and we are very proud to say uh, that we have obtained a triple accreditation, as you can see here, so AACSB and ACRIS and AAMVA, uh, and which are only have been accredited to 2% uh, of all business schools from around the world. Um, so, as I said, ESSEC today, it's a really uh, international and a world university with French roots. Uh, we have been founded in 1907, as I said, and that's where our historical campus is based, in Sergi. Uh, but we have also opened two other campuses, so one in Singapore in 2005, and another one in, in Morocco, in, in Rabat, in 2016. Mm, so, um, today, um, I mean, to start up with a this presentation I'll be having around 15 minutes. So I'm gonna kind of do a brief presentation of our program. Um, of course, we can go over your questions at the end. Um, and I thought when preparing this presentation that maybe the most important thing to know when you're a student as you are and that you're looking for a program is to know what distinguishes a program from the others, right? Like today we have so much information in the internet that sometimes it's difficult, right, to understand what really differentiates one program to the other. So as I said before, for this presentation, I'll be focusing in our bachelor, right, which is a four years long program in business administration and which, is, which we offer uh, in English or in French. So, as Leon uh, anticipated, we do not, I mean, you don't need to speak French to come to study at ESSEC because we have fully English uh, programs uh, in the undergraduate level, but also at the master's level. So, getting back to our strengths, we have mainly three. 
So the first one is the academic excellence. Um, as Leon also mentioned, we are in Grand École. This means um, what, we are private, but also we are very, very selective. Um, and we have been ranked uh, number one for a bachelor in business administration by three different rankings in the past five years, right? And we are also number seven in Europe, business school. So academic excellence is our first track. If you're looking to study business administration at the undergraduate level and you're looking for the best program, then that will, that will make us the best program for you. Second strength is the professional experience that we offer. Um, professional experience is very important. Um, I think if you happen to, to ask to anybody, the first job is really the most difficult to obtain once you have graduated. And having professional experience before graduating is very, very helpful. That's why we really um, do and emphasize this in our program. And our students finished their program uh, with at least 10 months of professional experience. Um, they have uh, different uh, internships which are mandatory. Um, uh, and there, we also offer an apprenticeship track, which I'm going to mention very, very quickly uh, in the next slide. What is this? This is Programme d'Alternance in French or Apprenticeship in English. And this is about signing a contract during the last two years of the program. Um, this is only available in our uh, French campus. Um, it's about signing a contract for the last two years with a French company. And it means uh, being a full-time student during the first six months of the year and a full-time employee during the second part of the year, right? This for the last three years of the program. And um, the, 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 you, this just not only enabled to have a very solid professional experience, but also uh, having the, the company that hires you to pay for your tuition fees. So um, this is an optional right, program that we offer, um, but could be that's it's very interesting, uh, mainly because of the professional experience. Um, just a parenthesis I would like to, to mention before going to our uh, third strength, is that, as I mentioned, we have campuses in three different continents, right? So in, in, in Europe, we have one in France, we have in Asia, we have one in Singapore, and in Afri Africa, we have one in Morocco. Um, international students can apply for the bachelor I'm presenting, either in France or in Singapore. The, the, the Morocco campus is open for dual intercampus mobility, but not to do the entire program. I just wanted to make this clear. Uh, but going back to the third strength, strength of a sec, but also mainly about the BBA, is the international perspective that we offer. As I mentioned, we have campus in three different continents. 34% um, of our students are international. This is at the, I mean, um, global, um, all, all over levels of, uh, sorry, undergraduate and graduate. But in our Bachelor uh, of Business Administration, we have almost half of our students that are international. So this is a very, very diverse environment, very enriching. And we have more than 170 international partners from around the world, um, which, with whom we have partnered to do, uh, so that our students can do an, um, an exchange program. And we have also built a partner uh, network um, and that, uh, for, for, for which we offer 10 uh, dual degrees. Uh, so in this map, you can see this is our network of partners. And just so you know, our students uh, during their third year of the program have to go abroad for an exchange, an academic exchange. And this is mandatory for all of our students. They have to, to go abroad for at least six months. They can also choose to go for a whole year. Uh, and they can choose to go to any of these partners, which are really top-ranked universities from around the world. We do have, a, of course, in Latin America. And this, um, this is the map of our partners for a dual degree. A dual degree is, um, what, what is this about? It's, um, I mean, our students would spend the third year of the program, so a whole year, uh, in one of our partners' universities and uh, then go back to ESSEC for the fourth year. And at the end of the program, they obtain both diplomas. 
So this is, of course, kind of doing, uh, obtaining two uh, bachelors for uh, during only four years, right? So this is, um, uh, this offers a lot of, of, of opportunities. Um, and then, yeah, so this is uh, just uh, to finish with this, with this slide of our strengths. Um, this is really what makes our program unique. And then um, to continue with our presentation, um, very briefly talk you about uh, talk about the, the what you'll be learning, right? Uh, if you come to a sec uh, to the global BBA. So the first two years of the program are mainly um, the, you will be learning the fundamentals on business and management. Uh, you'll be studying mathematics, accounting, uh, microeconomics, microeconomics, geopolitics. Um, statistics um, so this is really during the first two years of the program and starting in the third year um, you'll be starting to specialize right and you'll be able to customize your 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 program your schedule regarding your interests so if you are really interest, uh, interested in finance of course you'll be choosing your elective courses in finance or marketing or communications so this is really the idea uh, the objective is to give uh, students the opportunity to, starting in the third year, where they have already seen the fundamentals and know what they are their interests about, uh, start um, doing the kind of a programme à la carte, right? Meaning, uh, customize your 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 schedule. Um, so, um, what about our application process? So. If you have finished your high school or uh, if you are in your last year of high school, you can apply to our program, to the Global DBA. Here you can see the application deadlines for the, for the intake 2020, meaning uh, the year that starts in September, in a couple of months. This is just so that you have an idea of the different deadlines that we had like past years, right? So this is the, the application uh, process is um, finalized for this year but we offer between four to five rounds um, so students can um, as you can see you have like I mean every year the deadlines are very similar so uh, starting the July 1st this year we will open our platform and let's say that mid-October students who, who would like to submit their application will be already um, able to do that right so uh, mid-october uh, mid-january beginning of march and 8 of april are the four uh, rounds uh, to send your application um, and these are the documents that you need to send so our admission process has two different parts the first one is about saying sending the different documents that, I, that are, are listed in this um, slide uh, so you send all these documents online through our own uh, admission portal. Uh, we, you do not have to go through Campus France, you really have to apply through our own platform. And once you have sent all these documents, um, if you are shortlisted, you will be invited to an interview. It's an interview which is via Skype and it is in English. If you apply to the English track or in French, if you apply to the French track. Um, so, just to give you an idea uh, of our tuition fees, right? Um, so, um, if you apply to our French uh, campus in Sergi, um, you will be paying um, 13,750 euro per year, right? It's a four-year program, so you'll be paying this amount during four years. If you apply to the Singapore campus, you'll be paying um, 21,400 euro, uh, sorry, Singaporean dollar, not, not euro per year. To give you an idea, it's almost the same um, price as, as, the, as the French uh, track, meaning around roughly uh, 14,000 euro per year. Um, we do offer some scholarships. Um, not full full scholarships. We do offer twenty percent up to twenty five percent of the tuition fees of the program, and these scholarships are based in academic excellence. Um, so students that are selected for scholarships are those who have really 
great, uh, great, great grades in the last three years of their uh, high school, right? And we also offer some diversity scholarships, also for very good students, meaning uh, we have obtained very good grades, and who come from countries which are um, underrepresented yet, right, uh, in ESSEC. What do we mean by underrepresented? Is that we still don't have many students from that country at, at ESSEC. Um, so this is just to finish with my presentation. Um, so you have been listening to my, my presentation for a couple of minutes and you must be wondering, okay, but which kind of jobs are doing the alumni, right, uh, from ESSEC? So I thought it was, it was interesting to share with you this list where you can see that our alumni um, find, um, I mean, uh, they, they, they really access top, top management positions. As you can see, there's a lot of CEOs for very, very, very good, very big and important companies as Unilever, Coca-Cola, L'Oreal, um, etc. And you can also see that majority go to work to the private sector, but you have also some, uh, some students, minority, but still some, that work either in the public sector or in the international, in, in the international organizations as uh, IMF. The um, so thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I'm just finishing with this slide. Um, as I said, I, I'm in charge of, uh, of recruitment uh, in Latin America. So don't hesitate in contact, contacting me. Uh, you can send me an email. You can send me a WhatsApp. Um, I'll be more than happy to answer to your questions and navigate you through the process and tell you more about our program. Thank you very much. Bring back over here this uh, this slide, and actually ask those of you who have some some questions. Uh, please share them in the chat so we can try to, to cover and answer some of them. Magdalena, I have a couple of specific questions that students <clears throat> have been asking, and one of them is about the standardized uh, test requirements for U.S. applicants. Do you happen to know if uh, w what are uh, SX um, requirements for U.S. applicants? Yeah, and sorry, Pavel, you said for the standardized tests, right? Yeah, standardized tests such as uh, sure. SAT, TOEFL, yeah. SAT, sure. So thank you for, for that question. Um, we do not, uh, it's, it is not mandatory to send, for instance, your SATs, right? Or this type of uh, standardized test results. Um, it is not mandatory because we do receive applications from all over the world um, and not all of our applicants have this type of tests. Um, but of course, you are more than welcome to send them um, with your application if you have them. Otherwise, we will be looking into your uh, grades from the last three years of secondary education. All right. Uh, another another question which uh, a student has asked is about the, the sorry it's about the uh, what are the requirements to apply for uh, apprenticeship the one that you have mentioned uh, the, the student is asking no. if I understood correctly it only applies for the last two years of the education is that correct it's correct yeah so regarding the apprenticeship track um, as I as I said is only available in the French uh, campus, not in the Singapore one. Um, and um, it's, it's important to mention uh, that um, it's, it's, uh, it's, you need to speak French, right, to go to, to, to find this kind of, of contract. So what we do, uh, I mean, students that already arrive in France and at ESSEC with a good level of French will have, let's say, more chances, more opportunities to get this type of contract. However, this doesn't mean that if you do not speak French when you arrive, that you cannot, right? It's just a little bit more challenging, but you can. Uh, I do know some students that have managed to get uh, this type of job, 
but after really, really working and on their French during the first two years. Um, other than that, um, you really, uh, uh, meaning you have to have, be a student at ESSEC, you have to speak good French, and you just have to have also the will uh, to, to look for it, right? Because it's as any kind of job, it's um, is on up to each student to look for it and to really uh, contact many uh, companies and offering, uh, you know, your services. Uh, and, yeah, and finding this type of, of job. All right, thank you very much. Uh, another question which I would actually like the, the person who asked it to, uh, to kind of elaborate a bit more. Uh, because the question is the following, if in my country there are only two years of high school, can I apply? Uh, I believe that the, the, question, the answer to this question is, is very easy, uh, but if you, if you can elaborate a bit more, uh, it, will be, it will be easier. And uh, let us just jump to another one because you've mentioned the scholarship, which is up to 25% that the SEC is offering. So a student is asking, uh, can you give more details about the scholarship? And another question comes afterwards asking, what are the GPA, uh, what, what GPA would qualify someone for uh, the scholarships available at the SEC? Hmm. I understand. So maybe, so your first question, Pavel, was um, about how many years of high school, right? Uh, you have to you have to have um, finished to, uh, to apply to ESSEC. Uh, yep. Did I get it? Yes, I was, I was right? just wondering if the student can, can join in and uh, write in, in, the, in the chat uh, what, what he or she is meaning by just two years of high school, because pretty much- Yeah, I, I agree. Every, because it's, guys, it's, it's a little bit- It's difficult to understand, yeah, because I agree with uh, majority of countries have, uh, let's say, five, to six years of high school, right? Yeah. It could, it's more, I think, in Latin America, we usually have more like five. Um, so as soon as you have um, a, a national diploma, right? Which has been um, recognized by the Ministry of Education of your country, uh, you can apply, right? It's, this is, you just need to have a high school diploma from your country, right? Um, and then regarding the scholarships, so um, maybe going back to what I just explained, uh, we do offer two types of scholarships. So one which is based really in academic excellence. I'm going to reply to the question about the GPA. So we do not ask for a, a specific GPA. We normally, we have very few, right, uh, scholarships for this kind of, of students, but we do have. Um, and then normally, what we what we uh, see in this in these applications is that it's normally like the best student of the of the year, right? Meaning, uh, you know, you have these rankings, and normally you have like which was the uh, the student with the best GPA in his or her grade, right? So we normally offer this kind of scholarships to those students who have been actually among really top three students of their cohort. Uh, this re regarding the academic um, excellence scholarship. And then the diversity scholarship, I can give you an example, for instance, from Latin America. Um, we still, um, this year we have uh, received a lot of applications from Latin America and we are very happy for that. Uh, we are looking to attract more students from Latin America. So there are some countries which have, with, with uh, from from which we have received uh, very few applicants and we do not have either one or even zero students uh, actually registered at ESSEC from that country. So if a student that applies to ESSEC is admitted because he or she has very good grades, maybe not top five, but uh, top 10 or top, top 15 percent of her or his class, and he or she comes from a country which is not represented yet in our student population, then we can offer a scholarship too. Let me, let me now elaborate a bit more because now, thanks to, uh, to Alexandra Nashliff, uh, I, I understand the, the question a little bit better. Uh, so, so because a couple of people asked this question, I believe they were referring to, uh, to this part of your presentation that you, you mentioned that the scholarship is available for those with 
uh, very high GPA in the last three years of their education. And uh, Alexander is saying that in some countries around Latin America, you can just have two years of high schools, uh, high school, and then you can graduate. So maybe the question was partially referring to this uh, to this explanation of yours that the scholarship is based on the on the cumulative GPA from the past four, uh, three years. Yeah, correct. What we look into is like the last three years of high school. Um, so in some countries, you know, never, normally you have like uh, grade till grade twelve, right? Mm -hmm. From grade one to grade twelve, high school normally is from from grades ten, eleven. Uh, no, sorry, from well, the last five years, right? Um, and we ask for the last three years uh, only. All right. So most probably in this case, if someone is graduating from a high school where the, the high school education is just for two years, uh, they will need to provide additional certificate for their uh, last year of pre-high school, so to say. Mm. Is that correct? Well, I, I, I suggest, since uh, I must um, admit that it's very, well, it's, I've never had this question before. If, of course, the, 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 the person who is asking the question uh, can, of course, contact me and we can go um, through the question together. We can go over it together and to try to understand better and, and provide you with, a, with an answer. Yeah, that's, that's definitely uh, the best suggestion. So uh, all of you who are uh, attending the session today, after, after the end of it, you'll receive the contact information of Ms. Dormal. So you can reach out over email to her and ask any of these very specific questions that sometimes need really revision to, to get the, the proper and the right answer. Uh, Magdalena, mm -hmm. another question uh, is uh, about, I mean, I will kind of paraphrase the question uh, because it refers to, to the opportunities to live and study in France and partially about the recognition of the degree received by ESSEC. Can you please tell us a bit more on uh, ESSEC's recognition, even though you mentioned that you're a member of so many different accreditations, uh, but also what are the opportunities for, let's say, a student from Mexico or any other Latin, America con uh, Latin American country to stay after graduation and uh, live and work in, in France? Mm, sure. So uh, our bachelor, as I said, is four years, um, four years long, and it is recognized by the French Ministry of Education. Uh, this is very important because this means that if a student wants to go back to his or her country after graduating from the bachelor that we offer, since the diploma is recognized by the French Ministry of Higher Education, um, this means that it will also be recognized in your country, right, as a French um, undergraduate uh, diploma. Um, this is mainly important if you if you want to find a job, sometimes your your recruiter can ask you for your diploma, and then it will be validated, right? Or if you want to pursue a master's, of course, if you want to do a master's, you need to demonstrate that you have a, a bachelor, right, or an undergraduate. So in 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 both cases, there will be any problem because, as I said, we have um, our diploma is recognized by the Ministry of Education. Um, there's also the opportunity, if you wish to stay in France, you have actually two options. So the first one is, so graduating from the four years program and then work. Uh, we have actually um, almost 40% of our students that uh, enter the job mar market after graduating from our program. And so you find a job, uh, right? And as Leon was mentioning, international students um, have up to one year after graduating to find a job in France, right? Regarding the visa issues, you would have one year after graduating to find a job in France. Um, we can also imagine another scenario in which you decide to stay at a SEC or even in another French um, university or Grand École and do a master's, right? Um, since our our program is four years long. It's, uh, it's the same as if you've done what we call, like in, in the European university system, is normally about doing a three years uh, licenciatura or licence, and then two years master's. 
So since our program is four years long, students that wish to uh, continue with a master's uh, program, they also need to add one year more and not two, right? So they finish the program in four years, and then if they want to pursue a master's degree, they would only need to do one year more, and after these five years, they would have so the bachelor and a master's. And once again, they, they choose if they want to stay in France or in Europe or go back to their country. Um, but if they want to stay in France, they do. They can, of course, find a job and they have one year to find a job. Great. And in this case, since we're on the topic of, uh, of the masters, may I ask uh, myself, ask a question. If, uh, if I want to, uh, to go just for masters at ESSEC, uh, for how long it's going to be? Is it again one year if I graduate at another school or it's going to be a longer period? So that depends. We have a master's programs that are one year and we have master's programs that are two years long. This mainly depends in, in what, type of, with, yeah, what type of diploma you have from your undergraduate level. Because we do have many students coming from Europe, for instance, that apply to our masters with a three years license, mm -hmm. right, or licenciatura. In that case, they have to do a two years program. But if you have done already at least four years of undergraduate studies, you can choose and do the, the, the one year programs that we offer at the master's level. I understand. Thank you. Uh, another question which was uh, circulated among the chat is about the, the housing and uh, do you offer such option at at your campus? Yeah, thank you for the question because I didn't mention it in the presentation since it was a little bit uh, short. But we do offer housing. So at the French, our French um, campus at Sergi, we have four uh, different housing options that we offer to our students. Uh, they are, uh, we own them, right? ESSEC owns these uh, four housing options. And um, when students get admitted to the program, they can apply to any of these four options. We have one that is on campus, so in the same rights, but it's like less than five minutes away from the classrooms and the, the campus. And we have three other options that are a little bit far away, but which are very close uh, to our campus. Okay. And this is in our French uh, campus. In our Singapore campus, we do not have housing. I mean, we don't. We do not know. We do not own. Own. Sorry, any campus, uh, any housing. Sorry, <laughs> we do not own any housing in Singapore. But our team in Singapore and even students help each other very much in um, advices on how to look for a private housing. That's great. So you, you have a strong community in place, student community that supports each other in the help into finding this. And uh, mm -hmm. talking, talking about your, your different campuses, uh, but before go, jumping to this question, uh, some, some of the students are asking about the, the cost of the housing. Uh, is it something sure. that's available on, on your website or? Mm -hmm. Yes. It is available if you look for housing as SEC business school. If you Google it, you you will find you will go you will find a web website and then you can download. There's different brochures that explain the different prices. But this is a it's a useful question that um, just to give you an idea, the housing options that we offer in France, for instance, they go between five hundred and fifty euro. Uh, per month to 700. The difference in the price is mainly because the ones that are 550 um, euro per month, um, it's a kind of a, an apartment that you would uh, share with around five to twin, five to seven students. Um, and the ones that are our housing options that are have a cost of 700 euro is because you only share your apartment with one person or you don't even share it with anybody. That's why it's a little bit more expensive. But this, uh, this question also takes me to, um, to um, an important information is many students ask me uh, about the, the monthly budget, right, uh, of living in, in France or even in Singapore. And you have to uh, consider that you would need between 
1,000 euro to 1,200 euro per month. Uh, and this really covers everything, meaning housing, food, um, leisure activities, uh, your cell phone uh, services, your Wi-Fi services. So this is really um, a global uh, budget for your monthly uh, living costs. Actually, uh, uh, Denise uh, was asking exactly what is the average annual co cost, including uh, everything like housing, meals, school fees, etc. So, uh, with, with your 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 tuition fees being uh, some thirteen uh, thousand euros and uh, this uh, this expenses, it's something like twenty twenty thousand euro for academic year, right? Yeah. It's some, let, let's say you want to kind of give a, a round budget, right? Cover, covering tuition plus the monthly living costs. Let's, it's, it's close to 26,000 euro per year. So 26,000 euro, uh, euro per year covering everything. Um, you have to consider also, as, as, as Leon says, uh, said that we, uh, French government offers interesting subsidies to students, um, like like the housing one and like museums that really many, many times students don't pay. Public transportation students pay half price. Um, so regarding if we consider these subsidies and if you really uh, kind of live as a student, right, and not having very luxury um, tastes. It's really 1,000 euro should be enough. We sometimes consider 1,200 euro to be a little bit, you know, a little bit more comfortable. Oh, all right. Um, that's that's part very clear. But um, since you, I mean, the students are maybe interested in uh, opportunities to fund their education while they are studying. The the program that you've mentioned is is a really great option for those in the last two years of the education. But is there uh, a chance and uh, is there such an opportunity uh, for the students to work on campus as, let's say, assistants or uh, people to kind of a, uh, are there people to support them in finding, let's say, job, part-time job while they're, they're students in the first two years of education? There are actually some um, students' jobs uh, that are, um, that are published in, in our, I mean, in our job, um, how do you say, like Bolsa and Pleo, right, in, in, in SX, that you have some opportunities for students that you can apply to as a student. You can also uh, work outside campus, right, like in, in, in a, I don't know, like in the shops around the, in Sergi, for instance, uh, or let's say, let's say, I don't know, like a typical, right, coffee shop or this kind of, of shops. Um, with, um, I think Campus France can correct me, but students with a student visa can work up to 20 uh, hours per week. All right. So that's the maximum of hours that you can work. So if uh, there are students that do this type of uh, student jobs, um, I would say that since, uh, I mean, the, the academic program uh, of the BBA is really challenging and you really have to study a lot. It is possible to have a student job, but maybe more like around 15 hours, right, per week. And still it could be a little bit of a challenge, but I know the students, some of the students do that. All right. And actually a uh, couple of last questions for today's webinar and today's session. Uh, one of them uh, is coming from Miguel, who most probably missed the, the slide of your presentation, because he's asking how uh, how we can know which countries are represented in your student population. That's a good question. Um, well, actually, we will be able to really uh, confirm this information when you really apply, right? And we have all the applicants next year, for instance. But, uh, for instance, this year, I can give you some of examples of, in Latin America, for instance, there was a student from Guatemala that obtained this kind of scholarship, uh, diversity scholarship, right? And a student from Argentina. That's great. And These were, uh, very quickly, yeah, two of the examples I can give you in Latin America, 
Uh, but there are countries we, we mainly receive applications from Colombia, Mexico, and Brazil. These are the three countries that are more represented, right, in uh, ADESEC. Uh, so, I mean, all the rest of the countries in Latin America are, could have the chance to obtain this type of scholarship if they have a very strong uh, application, meaning grades, uh, motivation letters, and recommendation letters. That's great. And the uh, last question that I, uh, that I want to ask you is about uh, about the French, uh, improving French language. Do you have something like summer schools that you can offer the students to improve their French skills or maybe preparatory program, how it is with you? Mm, thank you. Actually, thank you for asking this question because I, I didn't mention this in the presentation, but all of our students, uh, that all, all of the students of the BBA that do not speak French or that speak French um, are, uh, have to take a French course, and this is part of the curriculum. This is part of our curriculum. Actually, our students take three different languages at a sec. One is English, right, for everybody. The second one is French. So if you do not speak French, you will have to learn French. If you speak it already, we really um, encourage you to keep on learning and keep on improving your French. And then you can choose a third language which may be a language that you don't speak yet, but you would like to learn. It could be like Chinese, Japanese, German. Um, this is some of the, the languages that come out of my head. Okay. Uh, but regarding your question, Pavel, about summer schools, we do not have a, a summer school, uh, but uh, we do offer uh, these three language courses Per, per semester, starting from the first semester, all of our students are really uh, spending six hours per week as part of the, of the core curriculum, learning or, or continue learning uh, languages. I understand, that's, that's great. And uh, I believe that with this, we, we were pretty much able to cover all the questions. Thank you very much for, uh, for being proactive and asking questions during this session. We hope you, you enjoyed and you learned new things about uh, studying in France, uh, about uh, studying at the SEC Business School. Thank you very much, Magdalena. I, I would like to, to invite also uh, our friends from Campus France, uh, Leon and uh, Idalia, just to say final words and uh, to, to, uh, to see the, to show to, show to, the, to the crowd. Uh, Here, uh, moderating this, uh, this uh, I hope you, you, you have a chance los esperamos y bienvenidos with a us and our presenters and other. Thanks, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Leon. Thank you, uh, Idalia, for answering all the questions of our students. Thank you very much, Magdalena. Uh, we will finish this session with a very nice. Uh, video about uh, campus france and its readiness to, to welcome all of you future thank you france. merci gracias thank you very much gracias thank you dear all dear all I Dear all, I am Alice Guillon, the president of the Conférence des Grandes Écoles Management Schools in France and also the dean of Schema Business. I'm Beatrice Cayat, the head of Campus France office in Paris. French institutions are ready to welcome you. This could be done virtually at first if necessary, with a few weeks of online courses, with students' communities and personalized support, before having you physically on our campuses as soon as the borders open again and there is no health risk for you. So just friends, finalize your application. You. We are here Choose to friends. help you. We are we waiting for you. We are here to help you. We invite you to come and experience the renowned traditional French hospitality of schools and use the excellent you. services of so our bienvenue. schools to prepare your visit. So, bienvenue en France and à bientôt. Welcome to France.